Flesh and Blood is a two-player card battle game in which players take on the role of two fantasy heroes locked in bloody combat. Players may select from one of four different heroes, each of a different class, and gather up some equipment to protect them, dust off their trusty weapon, and build a deck of cards that represent their attacks, defenses, and other special items to aid them in the battle. So what do you need to play the game? Well, in constructed formats, you'll build a deck of 60 cards and use them to beat up on your opponent until one player player's life is reduced to zero. What's that person behind the screen? What do you build a deck out of, you ask? Well, let's talk about cards and card types. These are your hero cards, and each player can pick up to one hero to play as. Each hero has a different class, shown here. This is also where you'll see the different types of cards in the games, down in this middle area. Be it an action, a reaction, whatever the card type is, it'll be listed here. Heroes have a starting health here in the bottom right, and an intellect or hand size here in the bottom left. This number will be how many cards you'll draw up to at the end of your turn when it's time to draw cards. The heroes each have a different ability that may help them make use of their class cards more easily, and there's also a young version of each hero. The young versions are exactly the same as the older heroes with one minor difference. Young heroes only have 20 health, whereas their older counterparts have 40. In Flesh and Blood, you will use the older heroes during constructed format play and younger heroes in draft and sealed formats. Weapon cards look like this. As of right now, there are only four weapons in the game, one for each class. You'll see that this weapon is a hammer, and it can only be used by guardians. It also says 2H, meaning it has to be used with two hands. You can't build a deck and make use of two hammers, only one. Weapons have an attack value here at the bottom, represented by that little yellow spear-looking thing, and they also have an ability. This is an activated ability, meaning you have to pay resources to use it. More on that later. These are your equipment cards. All equipment cards have a name at the top and a defense value at the bottom. The bottom center shows if the equipment can be used by all classes, as in generic, or just one specific one. And the center box may also include special ability text. Equipment cards start on the table rather than in your deck, and you can only have four pieces of equipment. One for the head, one for the chest, one for the arms, and one for the legs. Most of the time, these can be used to help defend against enemy attacks, but more on that later. Next on the list of card types is the action card. Action cards, as the rulebook states, make up the majority of cards in your deck, and they will take an action point to play. You can tell if a card is an action card by checking the bottom middle of the card, as mentioned before. If a card says action, then it is clearly an action card. Some say attack, some say aura, some say say item, but all of those are action cards. When you play action cards, if they have attack on them, then they'll go to the chain at the top. If they have something else like aura or item, then they'll go somewhere on the board. Right now it actually doesn't really matter where you put them as long as it's visible, and they will stay there until their effect destroys them. On the top right of most cards, you'll see a resource cost. This is how much it costs to play that card. On the top left, you'll see some dots. This is how many resources that card is worth, either one resource two, or three. There's also a handy little color-coded bar at the top center to help you see how many resources they're worth at a glance. Red gets you one, yellow gets you two, blue gets you three. Just about every card in the game can be pitched or used to generate resources, as well as being a played for their effect. So you can do one or the other. So in order to play this card here, I would need to spend resources, three to be exact. To do that, I find some cards in my hand with three or more little red circles in the top left and I pitch them into this zone here. When I pitch a card, I spend those resources to pay the cost of the card that I've played. If I paid four resources to play a three cost card, for example, then I do still have one resource floating out there in the ether that I can use on other stuff later. It doesn't go away, it's still there. Back to cards. On the bottom right, you'll often find a little shield symbol with a number. This is how much damage that this particular card can defend you from if your opponent is attacking you. Just like how cards can be used for their effect and also be pitched for resources, cards can also be used to defend against attacks. We'll cover more of that later. On the bottom left of an action card, you may see a little yellow spear looking thing like we talked about before. That is how much power you'd be sending at your opponent, how much damage it might possibly do. And generally, this means you're holding an attack action card, which you can see down there at the bottom center yet again. And don't forget, you'll always find any ability text in the center. Oh, hey, look, cool art. Okay, other types of cards, attack and defense reaction action cards. These are very similar in look to action cards, but they can only be played at specific times. To understand when you can play these cards, we'll need to discuss how a turn works, which
which we will get to in a second. Again, to play these cards, you have to pay the resource cost there in the top right, and you can also pitch these cards for resources. And that's card types. Pretty simple, really. There are a few nuances here and there, but those can be discussed in another video and another time. So let's set up for a game. Here's a look at how you set up your board to play. Place your chosen hero in the middle. Place their weapon or weapons on either side of your hero. Don't worry about that arsenal zone, we'll talk about that at the end of your turn. Next, put all of your equipment there on the left side, and then put your deck to the right. Notice there's the pitch zone right next to the deck. That's where you'll toss the cards that you spend to gain their resources. Finally, draw cards until you have reached your hand limit, found on the bottom left of your hero card. By the way, it's gonna be four until they release more heroes because they're all four. Okay, let's talk through a normal turn somewhere in the middle of the game. You will start your turn by triggering any effects that say, quote, at the beginning of your action phase, end quote. After you get those out of the way, you get a single action point. This is super important to understand. Normally, you only get one action point with which to work with on your turn. And don't forget, any action card that you play takes up that action point when you play it. So what does that mean? Well, it might mean that you only play one action card during your turn. And that's okay. Some classes actually want to play just about one action card a turn. But there are ways to gain extra actions, and one of those ways is by taking advantage of the keyword go again. Go again is a keyword that literally means when this card resolves, gain another action point. So in that way, you could play an action card that had the go again keyword, use that card to do a thing like attack, and then when that card resolves, gain another action point, play another go again action, resolve that one, gain another, rinse, repeat, until you've either run out of resources paying for all of these cards, run out of action points, or run out of cards in hand, which is actually pretty easy to do. So let's say you've done something like that and you've used up all of your resources or your action point for the turn. Once that happens, you will move to the end of your turn. To end your turn, take a look at the remaining cards in your hand and decide if you'd like to put one of them in your arsenal face down. That's this little zone below your hero. Cards in that zone can be accessed on either player's turn, but they can only be played. Cards here can't be used to pitch for resources, for example. They can't go into that pitch zone from the arsenal. And they can't be used to defend against your opponent's attacks. That'll make more sense here in a second. So after you've chosen whether or not to put something in arsenal, you'll then move your pitch zone cards to the bottom of your deck, yes, the bottom of your deck, in any order you get to pick. And then after all of that, you enter your draw phase of the game, where you'll draw up to your hand size in cards from the deck. So with the draw step being at the end of your turn, rather than at the beginning, hand management and resource management become a whole lot more nuanced and interesting. That also brings us to the first turn rule. Normally, only the active player would draw at the end of their turn, meaning that if the opponent uses their cards to defend your attacks, then they would play their next turn with a smaller hand of cards and less options. However, at the end of the first turn, whether it's your turn or the opponent's turn, at the end of the first turn of the entire game, both players will draw to their hand size rather than just the active player. This gives a more even opening to that player going second because if you throw a giant attack at them and they have to spend their entire hand to defend it, their first turn of the game would basically be do nothing, which is kind of bad. So that's the overview of a turn. It's pretty simple. Just trigger any beginning of game effects, use cards from your hand with your action points and your resources, arsenal a card, recycle your pitch zone, and draw up. That's it. And finally, now that you know what a turn looks like, let's talk about what attacking looks like. This is actually how you plan to kill your opponent. So let's jump into our turn. We are Katsu, this little ninja dude, and we want to use our single action point to play this leg kick. So we put leg kick up here on the chain and make a note that we've used our action point. We look at the resource cost and see that it will cost one resource to play and use this card. So we pitch this card from our hand, giving us two resources. One of those goes to paying for leg kick, leaving us with one more resource for later. Now we've played an action card that is an attack, as you can see there in the bottom center of the card. This means that we've opened up what's called a combat chain. After we play an attack opening a combat 
chain, the opposing player moves to their defense step of the chain. At this point, they can choose to defend with a card or multiple cards from their hand to prevent some of the damage from this attack. You can also defend with your equipment alongside of the cards in your hand. You can kind of mix and match the way you would like to. You cannot, however, defend with a card from your arsenal, though. So we're attacking for four, and our opponent decides to defend with this card from their hand and with this piece of equipment. Note about defending. When you defend with a card from your hand during the defense step on a chain, it costs nothing. You don't have to pitch resources to play these cards because you're not playing them. You just get to put them down like this, and it'll block that much of the attack, whatever it says on the bottom right. So with our opponent deciding to block in this way, he has actually blocked all of our attack power, but the combat chain has not yet closed. There is still the reaction step. Once the opposing player decides what they want to defend with, if anything at all, that is, you as the active player can play any attack reaction cards from your hand. To do this, we play it down next to our action action and pay the resource cost with a card from our hand to the pitch zone, right? After we declare our attack reaction, then our opponent can declare defense reactions. And defense reactions are played by paying their resource cost, not just by playing them out like a defending card. And this is the moment where you could use a card in your arsenal. If our opponent has a defense reaction in their arsenal, they can pay the cost of the reaction and play it down to further defend from the attack. So in this scenario, they defended like this. We resolve everything and find that their X defense beats our X attack, so no damage goes through. Now that we've resolved that, we get the go again keyword to trigger and gain another action point via leg kick. And with that, let's play another attack action, Rising Knee Thrust. It doesn't cost us any resources to play this because in the top right it says zero, so no need to pitch anything. Playing another attack action uses up that action point and it opens up another combat chain, wherein our opponent can choose to defend with cards from their hand and their equipment. We could then use reactions, and then they could use defense reactions, and so forth. And that's how play goes. We do as much as we can with the action points, cards, and resources at our disposal. Then we draw up, and we pass on over. Then our opponent gets to do the same. And then, of course, the reverse is true when we are defending. If our opponent plays an attack action card or attacks with their weapon, then we can choose to defend with cards from our hand. And then after we declare what cards we want to defend with, we move to the attack reaction and defense reaction step if we have something in our arsenal that we want to play defense reaction wise we just pay its cost pop it out there so on so forth honestly the game is really intuitive it's really easy to pick up and play it makes a ton of sense you're really just playing down cards and trying to press an advantage in some form of resource management trying to lower your opponent's health it's super fun so that's flesh and blood in a nutshell I've really enjoyed the past few months playing this game and experiencing the different ways that you can play it and the different choices that you can make while you play the strategic choice of using your cards to defend versus saving up your cards, taking damage, and then having a big turn yourself. Managing multiple resources from action points to resources from hand is also really cool. And almost every game that I've played has been really close down to the wire. And I haven't even talked about the awesome art and theme of the whole thing. The fact that you're just a guy fighting another guy or a girl fighting another guy, throwing attacks, throwing punches, slashing, doing that sort of thing is just really fun. I highly recommend that you check the game out. If you enjoyed this video or if you got something out of it, if this video helped you at all, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. Those things help. Please leave a comment below if I missed anything or if there's a, a further question that you have about the game. I tried to cover as much as I could while making it nice and succinct and not too long and talkative. If you'd like to see any further flesh and blood content, please leave a comment down below and let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.